I'm here, I guess, through Alan. Um, a few years ago, I guess three years ago or so, uh, I'm in the library at Walpole. I've just moved to the area. And um, Irish Shanaki. And I'd known a Shanaki who changed my life. I still know her. So I decided to sit in on the storytelling group. And he's a piece of work. <laughs> he is a wonderful, wonderful, magical piece of work. Mm. And uh, he told me about this. I did, I've never met Hippolyte, Hippolyte, but I did go online and just watch a couple of his talks. And I can't wait to meet him. I can't wait to meet him. So just in learning a little bit about Hippolyte and also knowing somewhat about uh, the genocide in Rwanda, I chose to try to figure out forgiveness because that's very hard to do. Forgiving is very, very hard to do. And so, I was changed just by watching him, watching him speak, and then doing some research about the genocide. Because as I remember it, that horrific time just kind of passed through real quickly. Um, it wasn't like it was uh, on the media, all of, you know, everybody talking about it. It just kind of passed through. And revisiting it, 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 it was just, how do you forgive that? How do you forgive that? But you can just know that he has forgiven that, that his heart is open. And I would tell you that a lot about him made me again look into what is it about these people, these particular people, <clears throat> who can now bring themselves together in peace and be one. And I started listening to their music. One particular piece was the Hallelujah the Rwandan hallelujah. And you have to go online and just go to YouTube and find it. And I thought to myself, that is how I've been able to forgive a lot in my life, is through music and through poetry and through storytelling with people I didn't even think I had anything in common with. But as I've grown older, my friends are, are looking just like everybody. Everybody. People that I was told hated me and I should hate them as well. So, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more that I could talk about, but I'm going to leave it there and mm -hmm. say that you guys are going to do a world good. Mm -hmm. Not a world of good, but mm -hmm. do a world good. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you still play in your harmonica? Every now and then, yes. No, oh, okay. Yeah. Take that. Um, he plays harmonica as he walks across. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I'll be following you. I'm sure all of us will be following you. I followed you for a while. Um, it's the music. It's the music, the poetry, the stories, the one-on-one -on -one with people, the group talking, looking into people's eyes, and forgiving, and not judging, and seeing the world at peace, so may it be. Hi everyone, I'm Mark. Um, I want to thank everyone who has 
here sitting next to me. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of things and I think what I'm inspired to do is just let the music talk for itself, speak for itself and offer these songs to this moment. Come on, 
music is my weapon when I'm talking to you. Music is my weapon, it might not seem like it of mass creation my transportation to every nation to every heart that pangs like mine to every soul that feels it's time to step across the line with music as my way music is my weapon when the bomb Music is my weapon, the choice of mass creation, my transportation to every nation, to every heart. Every soul that feels it's time to step across the line with music as my way. Our true home is in the present moment. To live in the present moment is a miracle. The miracle is not to walk on water. The miracle is to walk on the green earth in the present moment, to appreciate the peace and beauty that are available right now. Peace is all around us, in the world and in nature and within us, right within us, in our bodies and our spirits, and once we learn to touch that peace, to touch that peace, to touch this peace, to touch this peace, we will be healed and transformed. Thank you.
don't know what to do now. <laughs> Oh, we, 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 can, we can always tell a story. We can always yes. sing a song. Um, so what, what time? Are, what kind of time are we working with? Fifteen more minutes. Fifteen more minutes. Oh. Oh. Ah, enough, uh, Fifteen more minutes for an Irishman is just you know waking up. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're good. We're good to go. Whatever you like to do. Yes. Do you want to do, you can throw pebbles in the stream from out there. Yes. Yeah, throw pebbles in the stream and we'll respond to your pebbles in the stream. That's just like, it'll be a voice in the wilderness that you are since you're out there. <laughs> so are there, are there words from many of you out there that you can just throw into this, this stream that runs between us right now? It doesn't even have to make sense. Quest. <laughs> Making quest. sense has a lot to Quest. What? Quest. Q-U-E-S-T, quest. Quest, what is it? It's a, what, my quest? Yeah. My quest is to go on an adventure next year and try to change the world. It's, it's resonating what you all are saying right now. Ah, ah that's great. Huh. And where are you going? Everywhere. Everywhere. That's yeah. great. That's great. <laughs> Wherever and wherever I can make it to, that's where the plan is. Ah, that's wonderful. Absolutely. Wow, wow, that's wonderful. Right. Uh, Others, others, others. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. Take us with you. I will. That's the plan. Yeah, right, right. Yes, get a get a video of this, and when I, when you get lost on the road, just play the right video. We'll be with you. Uh. Max got another song. Max got another song. Oh, um, well, but I want to leave time for the. It's not going to be fifteen minutes long. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. When I was in the army, I was I was in Germany, and I couldn't go to Auschwitz. It was too horrible for me to think about people treating people so badly. And when I think about the horrible atrocity in Rwanda, to go ahead, my natural inclination is want to run and hide underneath my bed. But all of you are looking at it and thinking about it. What do you have to say for hope for that kind of thing about how do you face such an awful thing and come up with still have the hope that you do? Uh -huh. I think the answer would be rooted in uh, forgiveness, at least in my opinion. Um, it's a powerful act, you know. Um, you know, a lot of people think about forgiveness as forgiving someone who's, who's wronged you, but um, another way of forgiving is to forgive yourself for something you've done, you know. And uh, that's the way I see it. Forgiveness opens up doors, you know, it opens up the doors of peace, doors of friendship. Um, I certainly can't speak for Hippolyte, but I listened to an interview he had on BBC uh, World Radio. You can actually find it online. And he talked about how after the genocide, he planned to become a killer. You know, he had it in his heart and in his mind. He wanted revenge. And uh, it was through educating himself on sociology and other sciences, he, he learned to forgive and... Uh, he actually went back to the village where his father was murdered and he forgave the killer. You know, the person who murdered his father, he was able to forgive them. And now here he is in Boston this weekend sharing his testimony at a world summit, you know, with other world leaders and young minds alike. And here he is uh, representing his country of Rwanda. And I don't believe Hippolyte views his country as uh, Hutu or Tutsi, you know. Um, I view, I think he views them as Rwandans together in love, in spirit, in peace, and forgiveness. And going back to the sites, you know, a lot of people wonder why they don't knock down buildings like Auschwitz or other places, but um, it's historical, you know, and, and it, places like that, it's almost a, a doorway to forgiveness, you know, leaving those places to stand still. Um, that's the way I see it, you know. It, it, it opens up hearts, you know, and uh, it doesn't do evil anymore now. The people have come together and they're doing good. And uh, Hippolyte's message is very much a message of spreading peace and love. He calls them seeds of forgiveness, seeds of peace, you know. And like little pebbles in the stream, when you, when you plant a seed, they can grow into beautiful things, you know. They can come to fruition. You don't know where they'll lead. opens up to more doors. And I guess that's, that's my thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. Places. 
you know, when you're talking about Auschwitz, and uh, I've been a couple of places that have really made me angry, but they put me at peace just being there. Um, I had the opportunity to go to uh, the anniversary of uh, the Selma March and uh, walk across the Pettus Bridge with a group of my church friends and um, all of these people, they came from all over the place. This was a week-long thing. And uh, walking across that bridge, there were throngs, just throngs of people. And you couldn't hear anything. You couldn't hear anything. And uh, you'd go up and you could stop. And I stopped and looked in the water and I said, there are bodies in that water. There are bones in that water. And then uh, something happened. I was, I felt oddly at peace. I felt oddly at peace. What a beautiful spot that was, a sacred spot. Um, I also had the opportunity to, to stand in Anne Frank's room in the Netherlands and um, read her little writings on the wall and pictures that she'd taken out of magazines. And I mean, how do you forgive something like that? But there was a peace in that place that was unbelievable. There's peace all over, in every corner. You know, and you can share it. You can take it with you and share it. Hmm. I think that um, when I think about you know something some place like Rwanda or the Holocaust or what happened recently in Christchurch, or wherever these horrible things happen, and there are opportunities for forgiveness. But I think that every person here has an opportunity, maybe within your own family or your community, for forgiveness. I can remember a man saying to me, and he was helping out at the Peace Abbey, and he said, I said, oh, and where's your daughter? And he said, oh, I haven't spoken to her for years. And I thought, what would keep a father from not speaking to his daughter for years? So I know that everybody out here probably has an opportunity for forgiveness. We think about the big situations and horrid, horrible situations, but how about within our own families? If it starts there, Elise Boulding always said, you start right within your own family, and you move from there to the community and then to wider and wider places. And then it's possible. Forgiveness is possible. And that's very much the uh, message that Hippolyte's asking for people to participate in this project through letters. You know, it's not so much, you don't have to have a personal connection with the Rwandan genocide. Uh, it's an introspective, looking into your family, into your life, where can you forgive, where can you plant seeds of peace. And uh, like I said, be the peace net. There's a volunteer form where you can send a, a letter of forgiveness. Um, and it, it sort of, it takes, it takes the foundation of the Rwandan genocide, you know, the, these seeds that are being planted, and it, it allows them to grow elsewhere in the world. Um, so it's, hmm. Every Friday is, yes, go ahead, yes. I went to see a play, and the name of the play was, I have before me a young lady from Rwanda. Uh -huh. And I can't really remember what it was about, but I, I'm realizing now that just to say the title of the play is important. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I see mm -hmm. before me a young lady from Rwanda. Uh -huh. Huh. 
There's a great <laughs> book on the Rwandan genocide too. Um, I was actually mentioning it earlier today. It's called "We Wish to Inform You That Tomorrow We Will Be Killed with Our Families," mm. and it's by uh, Philip Gorovich. I'm currently mm. reading it now, but it's won multiple awards and uh, it's uh, has an element of storytelling through it. And I would definitely recommend anyone who wants to learn more about the Rwandan genocide to look at that book or others. Hmm. Yes. I think something that's been really resonating with me listening to your stories and music is the divisions that have been that have caused so much violence and hate in our world were created by people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And consequently, we also have the power to change that. Yeah. And I think that today you have really inspired me to really like think about how I can do that every single day to work mm. towards <laughs> breaking down those divisions. Our borders are man-created. Our, our political organizations are created by, by humans. And, mm. you know, we created the mess. We can clean it up, too, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And Frank says every Friday to me, she wakes me up and she says, in spite of everything, we still believe that people are really good at heart. Mm -hmm. We simply can't build up our hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. We see the world gradually be being turned into a wilderness. We hear the ever-approaching thunder which will destroy us too. We can feel the suffering of millions, and yet, if we look up into the heavens, we think that it will all come right, that this cruelty will end, that peace and tranquility will return again. In the meantime, we must uphold our ideals, but perhaps the time will come when we shall be able to carry them out. Ah. Mm -hmm. 14 years old. And she still lives every Friday in my house. 